Welcome to case study video number seven, in which we are going to investigate a Photoshop plugin called Topaz Remask 3. And what it is is an extremely advanced masking plugin, and it gives you a huge amount of control. And really, we use it when uh, total precision is absolutely necessary and where the quick selection tool gets to a point where it's not really performing as we would want. So what we have done is we've picked up the this video where we have the two images that we dealt with in Lightroom in the previous video open as layers in Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is just go filter, Topaz Labs, and as you can see, they have a lot of filters. Um, and there we are, Remask 3. What this does is give you a scenario where everything that is green will be kept. So in your final mask, anything that's green will be kept. So what we want to do to start off with is with a reasonably large brush, draw around in blue. And what the blue is, is the zone that uh, the plugin will calculate. So they will calculate uh, where it's blue and then they will delete everything that is red. So if we use the fill and click in red there, then everything that's red here will be deleted in the mask. So the first computation of the mask is quite rough, um, but as you can see, it's already done a very good job. Now, we have a split screen capability here. So on one side, we can see what is going to be kept. And on the other side, we can see the actual mask in, in its own right. So if we zoom in here, we will see that superficially the mask is quite good. But at the same time, we've got lots of these thin branches that are being lost uh, in their totality. Now, there's different ways that we can look at keeping the bits we want to keep and losing the bits that we want to lose. The thing I find easiest to do is to do this dual color selection, where we say we want to keep one color but lose another color. So if we click on the branch and then click on that bit of sky and paint over that, we have made a bit of a mess. But let's just persevere. These things normally take a little bit of trial and error. If it is removing something that you want to keep, then you need to click again. So here we are, here's a section where we want to keep the green and lose the background. Now, if you find it's picking up too much of this stuff, you can reduce the color range down to say five. And you always want to be clicking on something you want to keep with the green tool and, click, and uh, clicking on something that you want to lose with the red tool. If you want to lose a specific color, then we can go through this and keep recalculating. Or if you're in an area where you know that there's something you want to be definitely losing, then you can do it this way. So the tools are quite specific in that they allow for a very high level of sophistication with regards to uh, dialing in on these incredibly specific colors. To keep that and lose that. This speckling is a slight annoyance, but you'll usually find that it only takes a short while to 
fine tuning. The the main the main thing is to is to keep the bits that you want to keep. These tiny little sections of um, speckling and things like that they're they're just not going to turn up in the in the mask anyway. So you're hardly going to notice the thing. Just keep clicking through here and. It's definitely a scenario whereby the the more time you spend to fine tune your mask, the better result you're going to have. It's it's really quite that simple. So the more you the more time you you put in, the better the result you get. So. I usually find that it's going to take me, you know, depending on how complex the situation is, you know, it, it could take 10, 15, 20 minutes. And I'm not going to do that in the video now because otherwise we're going to be here all day. But it's definitely one of these scenarios where the more time you put in, the more quality you're going to get in your mask and you will end up with a result that is infinitely superior. So I'm going to draw this to a close fairly soon. But even in such a short period of time, only a few minutes, you can very quickly build up a mask that is extremely complex. Once you're happy with it, you can click OK and the mask is produced here and it also creates it in this um, channel palette. With the mask selected, we can actually delete this top layer because we just don't need it anymore. And it's just a simple case then of clicking add a mask and it's done a really great job. You know, it's it's superior to, to the old one. Again, I'm in a situation where I like to, these things to look reasonably natural, so I would use a very low opacity black brush here, 16%, 21%, to just skim over that top surface, skim over that transition zone, very, very gently. And we now have a situation whereby we have virtually a perfect mask. Now that is precision and, you know, with a little bit of fine tuning and a little bit of just uh, of paint work, we come to a scenario where we have a blend that we can be proud of, I would say. So that's it for Remask 3. It's something that I use very often when I'm wanting absolute precision in my masks. Um, and that's it. Back to the book.